If my name was called, I wouldn't know. I was frozen in confusion because Birkin Gods, what are you up to? Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Olivia and today I am unboxing a Birkin. I am so excited. This is my absolute dream bag. It is my first Birkin of many, hopefully down the line because spoiler alert, I love it. If you are into Hermes content, if you have a million Birkins, if you want to own a million Birkins, please keep watching. This is definitely the video for you. All right, so I have to start out by saying I found the perfect, perfect, perfect bag for me. And more than anything else, I am so grateful. Okay, I have been looking for this bag. I have wanted this bag for such a long time. And of course, part of that is because it is a Birkin, it's just kind of, you know, been on my vision board, been something I wanted to bring into my life, into my collection. But even more than that, it's because of what it represents, which is me setting goals and achieving them. Feeling like I can set the craziest goals in the world and they will absolutely come true because I'm willing to work hard and I'm willing to be patient and I'm willing to do all of the good, warm and fuzzy things that bring beauty into my life. So I am over the moon. I cannot wait to show you what I grabbed. Let's get right into the bag. All right, so you know your girl can sometimes be a little boisterous, babe. Um, today I'm going to be succinct. I'm going to tell a short story and I'm going to do it after I open the bag so that you can see what I have in here. So as you can obviously see, this is not a mini Kelly, okay? This is a big bag and it came in an orange dust bag, which gave me so much delight. Um, spoiler alert, this bag is not from 2007 or prior to. But to my knowledge, orange dust bags were typically given before 2007 and for box leather, which this bag is also not box leather. So opening this up was such a treat, such a fun surprise. And I love that for my first bag, I got such a rare dust bag. So just like I did a couple days ago, we are gonna open this up, drum roll please. Are you ready? It is, of course, a Birkin 35 Palladium Hardware in the color Etain, okay? <sighs> Something that makes this bag super unique is the fact that it is from 2011. So as opposed to the resin glazing being black, like we saw from 2011 forward, the resin glazing is actually brown and it almost reads a little maroon even in certain lights. Um, this bag could not be more, more, more perfect for me. I absolutely love it and I love it for so many reasons. Um, let me just, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I'm gonna put it down because I did take this bag for a spin already and let me tell you, it is not the lightest bag in the world, okay? Torion Clemence, or Torion Clemence, if you wanna hear me use my shoddy French accent, is one of the heaviest Hermes leathers. Um, when you think about Hermes leathers, there's honestly kind of a spectrum from quite light to quite heavy. And I will tell you, I bought this bag knowing that Clemence is a heavier leather. This is a bigger bag, so of course a 35, the Bag is not light, okay? The bag is not light, the bag is heavy. It has heft to it, okay? It's weighted. It's like a weighted blanket as a bag, and it is bringing me just as much comfort, so let me put that out there. Um, despite it being a little bit heavy, I do absolutely love the size that I chose. So I'll get into some of the background on why I chose this bag, where I got it from, the journey to it, okay? So if you've been to this page before, you know I tried my darndest to get a leather goods lottery appointment in Paris uh, in the summer of 2022. I will link that video above. I was convinced I was getting a bag. I was convinced I was getting an appointment, okay? Neither happened and it was perfectly fine. I love Paris, just generally speaking, it is one of my favorite cities on earth. So I had a wonderful time. I took the train to Champagne, I saw all the sights, I did a litany of shopping. I will also link the video above to everything else I bought in lieu of getting a Birkin that summer. So it was a wonderful trip. I came back a little bit disappointed, but I really wasn't devastated. You know, at the end of the day, as much as I love this bag and I see myself buying a hundred more of them in my lifetime, 
I just kind of felt like it's okay that I didn't get it just now. It is okay to wait. I'll continue to be patient. I will continue to, you know, just wait for the moment that it will happen because of course it eventually will. So I come back that summer. I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of like off my game. I'm not spending every waking moment refreshing pages, looking at the resale market or running to my local boutique to build my purchase history. Really none, none of that, to be honest. So maybe six months later, we're well into 2023. I'm kind of reinvigorated about this idea, okay? I am doing exactly that, refreshing all of the pre-loved sites, going into my local boutique, and I'm really committed to figuring out how to get a Birkin in 2023. Spoiler alert again, I obviously did not, as far as you all know, but little did almost anyone in my life know, I actually did buy a Birkin in 2023. So if we look inside this bag, you'll see that I have a Samorga insert in here, of course, the padding that it came with, and it's in this um, almost coral salmon pink color. Ladies and gentlemen, that's because your girl bought a Birkin 35 in Rose Jaipur last year. I'll insert a picture of what that bag looked like. And if you've been to my page before, if you even look at kind of what I'm wearing today, the way that my home is decorated, I am not a bright colored person. I don't wear bright colors. Uh, except for a couple pairs of shoes. I don't really have any super bright colored bags. It was just not me. It was not me and it was also a wake up call that I don't just want a Birkin. Like it's not about just having a Birkin because I've been trying for, you know, at that point, probably two plus years. It was not about just getting the bag. It was about getting the bag that would fit into my wardrobe and my lifestyle and the things that I love. Something that I don't love is a Birkin 35 in Epsom in Rose Jaipur. It just was not for me. So that bag went back. I didn't regret it, to be completely honest. I think, if anything, I was kind of proud that I was able to reframe in such a better, like, healthier way. I wasn't just pressed and thirsty and having tons of kind of pointless energy around something. I was shifting all of my energy to like, let's do what makes sense for me. Let's do what makes sense for me. So I send that bag back and I go back into kind of not really caring that much, not spending a bunch of time or energy in my local boutique, not refreshing the pages every day. And then like clockwork, several months later, uh, into 2024, I was back to, you know what? I want one. I want one again. Um, I hadn't bought a bag in like a year because I was saving up for this bag. Let me tell you what happened next was like not, not a fairy tale as it was occurring, okay? So I was scrolling on Fashion File, which is one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite places to shop pre-loved. This video is not sponsored, but I will link a bunch of amazing, amazing Birkin options on Fashion File in the description box down below. So I'm on Fashion File, okay? I'm in a meeting, I'm just, you know, off camera, kind of casually listening to a meeting. I hit newest, I hit sort on newest. I refresh my page. The most stunning Birkin 35 pops up on my screen. Beautiful red color, like the perfect red. Gold hardware in excellent condition in Swift leather. If you know me, you know, I am a Chanel lambskin girly and Swift leather is just as like delightful to the touch as Chanel lambskin. Or if you have felt the inside of Bottega Veneta bags, just that super, super crazy supple leather is what Hermes Swift is like. I am over the moon, okay? I am so excited. I rush to my bank that has all of my like, we're not touching this money money where I save things and let it grow. I transfer it to my checkings. Okay, this is all still the same 30 minute meeting, you all. By the time I hit checkout, the bag's gone. And like, as was my brain, okay? I, you would have thought someone like ran up to me on the street, screamed in my face and kept running. I was like stunned. I was stuck on stupid, is the term I used to explain this story to one of my friends. I'm literally stuck on stupid. Like if they were speaking to me in that meeting, I wouldn't know. 
If my name was called, I wouldn't know. I was frozen in confusion because Birkin gods, what are you up to? I don't get the bag. And at this point I'm like, all right, I have been on this journey forever. Maybe I just give up. Maybe this is really a pointless endeavor. If it's just if the barrier to entry is this extreme. If the resale prices are so over the top, why am I even trying to do this, right? And I was committed, let me tell you, I was committed to getting a bag that was either less than the you know brand new in-store price would be or very, very, very close to it. Like very little variance and fluctuation between the current price in the store. I wanted it to be ever so slightly under or just ever so slightly over. And as you know, if you have looked for Birkins on the resale market, some of the prices are literally extortionate. As in like people, I don't know how these people aren't in the pen because the prices are insane. Um, a mini Kelly, for example, you can get in Paris after VAT for something like $6,400. A mini Kelly on resale on Fashion File right now is probably $30 to $40,000. Extortionate, feels illegal, apparently is not. So say it all to say, I am in this moment of do I get it? Is it worth it? What's the point? I don't know. I'm not gonna pay a billion dollars. What am I going to do? Maybe three to four days later, I just kind of release it. I'm like, you know what? Again, just like I felt after Paris, being unsuccessful, getting a leather goods appointment, getting a bag there, it's okay. If I do not get this, it is not the end of the world. It is just a material item. Like I have my health, I have my family, I have success in so many other areas of life. Why would I let this drive me insane? I kid you all not, like I kid you not. No sooner than I had that like internal dialogue, I refresh a page quite literally as like a last ditch. I'm like, eh, you know, let me, let me just see. None other than this baby pops up on my screen. It is in amazing condition. The price is exactly right. After all of my research, I absolutely had settled on and knew without a shadow of a doubt, I wanted my first Birkin to be a 35. Um, as we all know, you know, Jane Birkin is on the plane in 1984. She's sitting next to Jean-Louis Dumas, who is the chairman or CEO of Hermes at the time. Her bag spills out. He drafts out this bag on the napkin and it is this bag. It is the Birkin 35. And so I just felt like I wanted the original I wanted it again in a neutral color, something that felt like me, fit just right. This popped up and I said, the power of releasing, okay? I said, come on somebody, the power of releasing, all right? I quickly call up Fashion File. If you don't know, they have something called their personal shopping uh, team and essentially what it means is that you can call people in two different locations You can ask them to pull a bag for you and they'll talk you through everything already listed on the website And honestly sometimes even more things more details that weren't captured on the website. I Love it. I use it again almost every single time I grab anything from fashion file which is probably a couple times a year and She shows me this bag there was another option that was the exact same thing. So Birkin 35 in Etain with Palladium hardware, but it was Togo leather and it was also a 2011. So did have this kind of brown maroon tone glazing um, all around the bag. She showed me the bags right next to each other and I immediately said this one, it's this one. I will link the other one down below if you absolutely love this and want to grab it. But for me, I just knew this beautiful bag in Clemence was coming into my house. It was about to move in. It was going to live in my wardrobe. And I am so, so, so excited that it is here. So truly, I could not be more excited to be able to share this moment with you all. This means so much to me, again, as just like a reminder that what I set my mind to actually is achievable. It is never out of my reach. Anything that is on my heart or on my mind can absolutely come to be. And so it's just a great feeling. Um, if you know me or you've been to this channel as well, you also know I can never just have one of something I like, okay? It's why I have the same outfits in like 40 different variations. I love what I love and I just know after, you know, like four or five days of having this bag, I just know this is the very tip of the iceberg, the very beginning of an absolutely un 
real Birkin collection. I cannot wait to grab another one of these and keep doing that year after year. But for the meantime, I am so excited to enjoy this bag. I am so, so, so grateful for this. And as I always say, I love the fact that this is now an heirloom. It's an asset that I can pass down um, and just give to someone in my family, maybe give to multiple people in my family. You know, the thing about these bags is they are just so incredibly well-made. They are handcrafted. You know, the Birkin, they of course make by hand. They flip it inside out is what retourne means. Everything about this bag is just so special. I'm so excited to pass it down generation after generation. And like I said, a collection is coming, okay? So this is about to become a Birkin Stan page because I just, I just love it. I'm so excited. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this long. If you've enjoyed this content, I hope you'll consider liking, subscribing, sharing it with a friend, and comment down below to let me know what you think. Do you love Etain? Would you have kept the uh, Birkin 35 in Rose Jaipur? What did you think about that Swift leather perfection? Give me all of your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, if you're not done watching, I'll leave two videos on the screen, and I'll see you next time. Bye.